Hi everyone, my name's Carla and I'm back working on Celtic Summer today. Um, I'd like to show you some of the progress I've made. Last time I was talking about um, putting some beads along the border and I seem to have got quite a lot of that done in the last couple of days. Um, it's actually really relaxing to do the beads. I thought it would sort of be frustrating and I was expecting to get a little bit tired of it but actually I found it quite relaxing and as long as I was prepared uh, with all my, my beads out and with my needles uh, ready to go that it was far less stressful than I anticipated. So this is, this is a pattern which I'm using 28 count fabric, it's a linen so it's very different to the even weave that I've used before um, it does take a little bit of getting used to, but um, if you if you find that you like a, a sort of stiffer fabric, I would say not to go for the linen because it's quite soft. And also, the, the beads are very small, so if you find it impossible to work with really, really tiny beads, I suggest you find an alternative, or maybe you could just do the crosses in your normal thread colours. So... Today I'm going to just place a couple of more beads just to see how we go and I have my needle ready and threaded. I do like to use the same colour thread as the bead that I'm using. I just think it, it probably would look better and be a little bit more consistent. So I already have my thread ready to go and I'm going to place a couple of beads on this little area here. Now first of all I make sure I have my beads ready so that I don't have to be looking for the right colour and finding out that they're all mixed together. I keep them all separated in different boxes. So I'm basically using a very slim needle that the small bead will actually slip through. And then push the bead along and just work up here. I'm going to slip a bead on to make sure that I have it on the right square. Now if I'm lucky that will sit nicely. I don't have a huge amount of choice as to how these particular um, beads will sit. Sometimes they can go turn out to sit in a funny angle but I try to go up and down the same hole each time so that it can look a little bit more consistent. Now this one's trying to to be a little bit awkward as they do but I'm just going to carry on and go down and the next bead that's alongside it is in the same colour so I will just go down pop that next bead on go into the next hole and hope that they don't tangle up so I've actually had far more success than I'm having at the moment, usually. But as it so happens, when you try to explain something, it nearly always tends to mess up a little bit. So there we have two beads close together. And the next bead that I need to do is not going to be too far away. So I'm going to bring my needle down to here without fastening off and I'm going to do another bead down this way counting the holes to make sure that I'm in the right place because as soon as I give up the counting I tend to find that it all goes a little bit crazy and confusing but it's relatively easy once you've um, got used to the pattern and a lot of these borders are very much um, repeated so I found that on this side of the pattern every alternate border is repeated so you can pretty much memorize the colors for each one. I'm going to go back here and do a couple of more beads so has, have you done any of these designs and if you have, how did you find the, the beading process? Was it tricky for you? Would you avoid beads altogether? Or maybe you found an alternative that you like or maybe you haven't um, 
actually done a design like this yet or perhaps you've beaded on a different cross stitch design. This is actually my first time using beads on a design that's cross stitch. Um, so I'm quite pleased that I haven't given up altogether because I tend to find that it can be quite awkward at first. And I really was, I mean, I should have really worked a few beads before actually doing the pattern to see if they suited me because not everybody likes to work with beads but then I suppose if you see that the pattern itself has a lot of beads you probably wouldn't want to to purchase it in the first place. I'm assuming that all the Celtic ladies have a fair amount of beads in them and they're actually that you don't actually get too many in a packet they're called Mill Hill beads and I thought I would get quite a good amount, but there actually wasn't that many, so I'm wondering if I may have to purchase more of them. I'm just going in the hole a couple of times just to make sure that the bead is secure. I don't want them to dangle too much so that when it comes to framing them, that they'll look neater. And I'll just pop the last bead into this side. Luckily I haven't lost too many of these beads. Thankfully I don't have any pets at the moment and I don't have very small children that will that it would be a hazard to. Um, I'm sure it's quite frightening when you've got small children and you're working with things like this. I would be very concerned about that and probably keep everything to a, a locked room and as tidy as possible. So that's looking pretty neat. Um, it's once you get used to the the fabric, the 28 count linen. I have to say that it's not that difficult to count the holes. I was very worried that I would miscount something along the way, but I was extra cautious with it, just to make sure that I didn't. And I think you do naturally get become faster once your eyes are adjusted to the fabric. I think at the beginning it would take me so long just to do a couple of stitches because I was so afraid of making a mistake. Although I didn't become more careless, I just naturally sped up a little bit with my confidence. And I think that's the last bead to go into this little section here. Do you have to be careful when you're passing the needle through that you don't pick up other threads. This has happened to me a couple of times and I've picked up threads passing my needle through and it's been quite awkward. So there we go, an almost one-handed beading session. So my aim now is to um, carry on working down the pattern and crossing off my chart to make sure that I've caught every bead in place. Um, I, can, I can't imagine how frustrating it must be to frame one of these and find that you have a little gap where a bead should be. Um, I suppose they say to me that once you've made a mistake like that, every time you look at the picture, you're always going to see that mistake. <laughs> so I'm really trying to avoid it as best I can. So thanks for joining me and let me know how you get on with your stitching.